It's now time to talk about vowels. And the thing about Hebrew vowels is that they don't exist in the original text. Certainly they have always existed in the pronunciation and understanding of words, but they were not written down in the originals. Rather, they needed to be added according to tradition uh, much later. And this was to preserve how they were read and understood in the synagogues. In modern Hebrew, you learn the vowel points when you're an elementary child, and then you sort of work out of them. Uh, you work to a point where you don't need them anymore, and you can read the language without the vowel points. We're not going to get that far uh, in our reading of the Hebrew Bible. Plus, most Hebrew Bibles are printed with vowel marks, and so we can use them to our advantage. But it is worth noting that these are traditional pronunciations. The vowel points are not inspired. Uh, rather, we can, maybe, every once in a while, raise questions about them. For the most part, we're not going to do that. But to really get a sense of what the uh, vowels are and what they sound like, I'm going to write out uh, some consonants here on the text to sort of serve as uh, placeholders for us. All right, so we've got our consonants written out. Let's talk a little bit about what these various categories mean. So along the side here, we have historically long or unchangeable. We have long, medium, and down below here we have short. These are sort of the, uh, the length values of the vowels themselves. Some vowels are longer than others. We have that in English as well. Long vowels, short vowels, that sort of thing. The thing about the historically long or unchangeable vowels is that they are all connected to consonants that act as vowel carriers, that lose their consonantal status but still are in the original text. And so these are unchangeable. Uh, the Masoretes were very careful to never change their, what they had received in the text. And so these, when we get to vowel reduction, which is a big part in understanding how to read and hear Hebrew, uh, these will always remain the same. They will not reduce under any circumstances. Hence, they are unchangeable. Nice. The long medium vowels can and will reduce, but they will always reduce according to their class. So whatever the long medium vowel in the A class is, if it needs to reduce, it will reduce down into the short or possibly even further down. There's a category of non-vowels we call schwas uh, that we will talk about uh, in a lesson or two. But you're always going to see things stay within their class, and they sort of go down the chart uh, as they are reducing. If they need to be lengthened in a process called compensatory lengthening, uh, they will do so once again according to class. And I'm going to draw some lines here to help distinguish uh, where our class, our classes uh, are. All right, so let's talk about the various vowels that we're going to encounter in the Hebrew text. And if we're thinking historically long, which is always a good place to start, we're going to have our comets hey. So notice it's named because there's a comets and there's a hey. How will you know when a comets is a vowel carrier or when it's in the consonantal text? Well, if it comes before a vowel, it is part of the consonantal text. And if it's at the end of the word, which is where often the comets hey appears, if it has a dot in it, that is called a mapique, and that means it is an original consonant, not a vowel carrier. But in this case, you're just pronouncing this ah, ah, just like an a. In our I class, we have two different ones. We have our Tsere Yod, which once again is named because it's Tsere and Yod, and our Hirak Yod, Hirak Yod. And these are pronounced A and E, A and E. The Tsere Yod is A, the Hirak Yod is E. All right, now notice there's no vowel underneath these vowel carriers. They will not take vowels underneath them, rather just before. That's one of the ways that you can tell that they are a vowel carrier or a historically long vowel and not uh, a consonant. Our next uses vowels in the U class. This is our vav holum, sometimes called the holum vav, which is a vav plus a holum over it, and the shurek, which is a vav with the dot right there. This is O and this is OO. Notice they're not pronounced VO and VU, but O and OO. 
acting as valve carriers in that way. Now the SHURAC is an interesting one because every once in a while it will appear at the beginning of a word. Uh, we'll talk about why that is a little bit later on in the course, but it's, it's good to sort of introduce that now. So these, when vowels are reduced or lengthened, they will not change. They will always stay like this. In our long and medium category, in the A class, we have our comets. And this is a, ah, a. Ah. In our I class, we have our tsere. And this is a, again, pronounced the same as the tsere yod, a. And in our U class, we have holum, which is o. O. So if we put these with the consonants, we would have pa or fa, fe, fo. Sounds like uh, a giant might be coming after us with that. In our short class, in the A class, we have the patach. Looks like a comets without the tail at the bottom. This is also pronounced ah. But you might want to pronounce it just a slight bit shorter than a comets uh, if you like to make that distinguishment. In our I class, we have our segel, which is an e eh sound. And we have our hirak. Notice not a hirak yo, but just a hirak. And this is our i sound. So e, i, e. E, i, e. Our hirak is our i sound. Our segel is our e sound. And then in the u class, we have what's called the comets hatuf. And this is the most persnickety vowel in Hebrew because it looks a whole lot like a comets because they're made the same way, but it's pronounced O like a holum. Now, this will have very strict rules as when it appears, so it will be easily recognizable, but it is often a trip up uh, to students. And our last one in the U class is our kibbutz, which is three dots in a downward diagonal slash, as it were, and this is our oo sound, very much like the shurek. So shureks will often, re or excuse me, kibitzes will often link them to shureks, and they can sometimes be used interchangeably. Oo. So going back to the top, we have a, a, e, o, oo, a, a, o, a, E, I, O, U. And these are the vowels that you will run into in Hebrew. One of the nice things about uh, vowels in Hebrew is that they will always be pronounced the same. It is not like English where you can pronounce the letter A who knows how many different ways, uh, depending on regional dialect and that sort of thing. These will always be pronounced the same way.